Last week, because everything happens on Thursday, Nintendo did their, uh, their, their spiel. Although in fairness, it was after the podcast. So, which was weird, because normally it happens dead smack in the podcast or earlier in the day, but, uh, we didn't get a chance to cover it last week. Um, but we can cover it now. I just have some of the highlights, because not everything, of course, was all that interesting, but there was some de definitely, definitely some Twitter, Twitter-owning news that, that came out where, like, the, uh, the whole of Twitter was tweeting about some of the shit. Uh, so let's get into a little bit of that now. So the first thing, uh, is Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak comes out in, uh, summer of 2022. That's an expansion to the currently existing Rise. And just as a, as a side note, even though this came out today, or sorry, last night with the Tokyo Game Show, uh, Monster Hunter Rise is coming to PC with all the updates in January. And that had a lot of people excited because once Monster Hunter World came to PC, now everyone, you know, or not everyone, but loads of people just want Monster Hunter to be on the PC because they, they like playing at not 15 frames per second. As it turns out, makes for an enjoyable experience when hunting monsters. Uh, so lots of people were excited about that. Uh, next up, Mar uh, Mario Party Superstars, uh, if you're looking for a reason to uh, lose more of your friends, drops October 29th. We had Disco Elysium Final Cut is coming to the Switch on October 12th. The Disco Elysium is one of the highest rated games uh, of its release year uh, and, uh, and also quite a unique experience. Smash Bros. Ultimate gets its final character announcement October 5th, so place your bets now. Mm. Who will be the final character? That's a good question. I mean, they've got lit I mean, they've got so many fucking characters now. How are you supposed Dude, I, to guess? I don't even know. I don't even know who's all in there at this point, right? So Odds are you could throw a dart at a board of Nintendo yeah. and some not Nintendo characters, and odds are they're in the game. So uh not a lot left uh at this point. Um I'm putting my bin in, even though it's you know a, a Microsoft title now and everything else. Uh, you know, we did get Banjo Kazooie in there. Uh Joanna Dark. From Perfect Dark, I think would make a, a pretty dope character uh, in uh, in Smash. Uh, I'm still campaigning for Birdo. That's some bullshit. Uh, and the ultimate meme that I think would break the internet and be a great last piece, Waluigi. Everyone's been wanting Waluigi as his own fucking character in that game. So uh, why not give Waluigi some shine? But we'll find out. October 5th, last one. I never thought we'd see the day, but here we are. The last one being announced in a couple weeks. Actually, a week, more or less. Uh, where was I on my list? Knights of the Old Republic is coming to the Nintendo Switch on November 11th, so uh, further proving that when you have 90 million consoles sold, you just put whatever games you have on the console because you're going to sell some games. It's just That's just good math at that point. Um... Oh, yes, right. Uh, for some more money a month, you can get Nintendo 64 and Genesis games. So they're starting to expand into that after people have been wondering why Nintendo 64 games weren't included, uh, much like they had, you know, uh, SNES and Nintendo games and whatnot. And so they announced this. A few extra bucks a month. Uh, you can get in on the action with Nintendo 64 and Sega Genesis games. And they announced the first of the lists uh, as well. And the list are as follows. Super Mario 64, Mario Kart 64, Star Fox 64, Yoshi's Story, Ocarina of Time, uh, Win Back Covert Operations, which is a bit of a, uh, of a dark horse in there, Mario Tennis, Dr. Mario 64, and Sin and Punishment. Those are the, uh, the first announcements for the 64. There were also, I think, some other ones announced that are coming, but these are the ones that are launching, um, I guess, with the, uh, with the service. Uh, as for Sega Genesis, we got Castlevania Bloodlines, it's a good choice. Contra Hardcorp, that's another good one. Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, it's a mean meme machine, but it's there. Echo the Dolphin, which a lot of people laughed at until you forget that uh, Echo the Dolphin was actually a really good video game. <laughs> and so, there's a reason it's there. Golden Axe, that's a hot one. Gunstar Heroes. I was shocked that they put that in there because that's always the one that when we talk about games that you would want to see, I like from Sega. I always mention Gunstar Heroes, but it's ne it never seems to make the list. Here it is, Gunstar Heroes, right off the rip. Uh, Musha, Fantasy Star Four. 
Rystar, Shining Force is in there. That's a good one. Shinobi 3, Sonic 2, so they picked the best Sonic right off the rip. Uh, well, I guess you could make an argument for Sonic 3, but there's a reason why you never see Sonic 3 show up anywhere. Uh, Streets of Rage? I thought it was Streets of Rage 2, and not just 1. I'm pretty sure it's 2. And Strider, uh, which is another, another good choice. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's the opening list. What are you thinking about that, Mr. Black? Uh, other than the fact that you've got to... So the current... Let me, let me clarify here. So the current online membership is $4 a month. Uh, which uh, gives you access to the NES and Super NES. Um, to get access to the N64 Genesis stuff, it's a new tier. Uh, but they haven't said how much yet. So it will be more than your $4 a month now to get access to that. Mm. So how do you feel about that? And then what are your, what are your, what are your thoughts on these, uh, these opening games? Uh, I mean, it, it just all depends on how much more it is. Like... If it's gonna cost six ninety nine, I think it's too much. So they only have really one option, and that's five ninety nine. I think four ninety nine, like a dollar. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, you know it ain't gonna be a dollar though. Like, there's no way they're gonna like. They're no, there's no way they're gonna be like. All right, there's an extra tier for a dollar a month. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> I just don't now, see the I just don't see the value. Let me I add let me add a little all right, let me spice it up a little bit for you, okay? You can get all these games on your Switch for free. A lot of these games, however, have online multiplayer now added to them. So who's who's playing this shit online? Multiplayer. I mean, Seriously. I'm sure there's more than a few people that would like to play at Mario Kart 64 online with some friends. No. No? no? Maybe. But no. The masses, no. If this if this is anything more than six ninety nine a month, they're higher than high. They're super they're super fucking high. I think it's gonna be so it's currently what was it? What did I say it it's was? Three ninety nine right now. I think I think this is getting pushed to either seven or nine ninety nine. That is insanity. I $10, think I think that's who in the right mind is paying ten dollars a month for some classic NES, Super Nintendo, N64, and Genesis, and you don't even have the entire catalog. You just have what they give you. <laughs> this is a uh, month, which means when you're done paying, you don't even have access to these games anymore. No. <laughs> no. Let me, let, me, let me add another, another little piece to this, all right? They're also having a release of a wireless N64 and a wireless Genesis controller for $49 US each. For the Switch? For the Switch. So this is, and, and, and just like the other, like the Super Nintendo one, it's only available to those who are on the service, so it can't be scalped as easily and resold. So you get, you get an X number per account. And you spend forty nine dollars to get an N sixty four wireless N sixty four controller, and my first question was, why? Well, why? But also, does the anal is the analog stick also going to fall apart in like six months? Yes. <laughs> well, probably. Like, not. is it the same probably mechanism? Not, because like, nobody's the playing these games, bro. Like, oh, that's yeah, it's fair. Okay. Like, that's... like this this is a novelty. This is like it'd be really cool to play Mario sixty four again. Um, and they play it for a bit and then, or they might beat it, beat the game. And then that's it. Like, I don't think anybody's buying their switch to grind out. N64 Sega Genesis games on their switch. You can literally put the whole catalog on your switch for free. You can just emulate it. You could, yeah. but I, was, I have nothing. I have, you have nothing. nothing? I, yeah. I've got nothing. I don't even I have a joke. So. Yeah. I don't even have a joke. Yeah, no. There isn't a joke to be had. I'm sorry. Like, imagine honestly, forty nine dollars US for no. a Sega Genesis controller. No. <laughs> imagine it for an N sixty four controller. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Like, <laughs> what? I, I I think what they could do is 
this should be part of their online membership. So like, well, that's that's what that's what Nintendo and SNES is. But for this, they're like, oh, we gotta bump that shit. No, you should be throwing that stuff in. Like that should be part of the experience. Like that, and I know it's Nintendo, so they're not gonna throw anything in for free. It's not their it's not their thing, and they're gonna make lots of money. Like here's the thing: like a lot of people are gonna pay for this and just like not use it. It's just gonna be. It's you know, some people will, but the masses. It, I don't think this there there's really a big market for this. Um, so here's here's the other thing is that is that these are additives like you said, which you know would be good if Nintendo's online uh, online service was actually worth paying money for in the first place. Yeah, the problem is Nintendo's online service is ass. Yes, like unabashedly poor. Original Xbox Live quality or worse in many games, and you're still like yeah, it's not as expensive as the you know opposition but the fact that like the, it's almost still insulting that they even want four dollars a month for the quality of service that yeah. they provide in yeah. their online and now they're like hey we're gonna spice it up we're not gonna make our online service more usable but we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna charge you more per month if you want access to some n64 and genesis games it's so ridiculous dude it's just just throw it in there like people already own all these like minis you know, the, the NES Mini, the, the SNES Mini. Like, now you're looking to, to gouge them again uh, on a monthly basis. Like, go fuck yourself, man. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, I mean, look, come on, Nintendo. <laughs> like, just throw this shit in there. It's costing you literally nothing, pretty much. Throw the stuff in there. Nobody is buying a Nintendo Switch to play Sega Genesis. Nobody. Zero. <laughs> This is not this is not selling consoles. This this is not this is, ain't nobody going, you know what? Now I'm gonna get a switch. No, like nobody's playing Sega games. All like, that this, aside, the stupidity of it aside, what are your thoughts on the list that they start they're start, starting it's, off with? It's mediocre. It's 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 like uh the N64 list. There's so many good games on the N64, and they throw in Mario and Mario Kart. And oh, the uh, Ocarina of Time, of course. If they want to fucking sell sell games, uh, or sell, th uh, but everybody that has a Switch already has Ocarina of Time on their Switch, and at least two different versions. It. Yes, they already own it. Anybody that's really interested <laughs> in playing these old school games as well already has an emulated Switch. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! I, uh, when, as soon as I, when they meant, when I heard the, the announcement, I was like, okay. And then I heard they were going to charge more. And I said, no, 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 this, this should just be added to the, your other back catalog. You, you are already known as the company that overcharges for re-releases of all of your fucking games. Yeah. Why are you, why are you doing this? This should just gonna, be there. And it sounds like they're going to release more. And that's they what they're going to do over like yeah. every three months. They're going to say, hey, we're adding 10 more games for each console. And there'll be yeah. one like marquee game that people are like, oh, I would love to play that again. So I guess I'm not going to cancel my membership. And that's how they're going to that's how they're going to get you. Like in the next set, you'll see like Donkey Kong 64 or 007 Golden. Well, they can't do 007. No, that, that one, unfortunately, they, you know, no. they, yeah, but there, there will there will be. Specific It'll be like Banjo Kazooie Banjo. or some exactly. shit. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Conker's Bad Fur Day, if they can get that yeah. on there. They might right? swing Perfect Dark. They won't get Goldeneye, but Perfect Dark, they might be able to still swing. Yeah. Depending on licensing for that. Yeah. So like, we'll see. Anyway, it's yeah. This news is bleh, whatever. <laughs> uh where was I here in this in this list of uh of fuckery? Uh, oh, right. On top of that, Salt of the Moon, European customers are getting the PAL versions, which come complete with the original slowdown on these, on these games, Great. which a lot of people are not, are not thrilled about seeing. Like, this is 2021. Just give us the North American versions, you fucking asshole. Why in the shit are you giving us the PAL version? Well, if, we don't if need to worry about that If you're shit. an EU, you're just not upgrading. You're just yeah. not upgrading. Yeah. Wireless, uh, we talked about the wireless controllers. All right, it's a Metroid Dread, which is great news because it looks like a good game. Uh, October 8th is the release date for that. We also got a sneak peek at Bayonetta 3, 
which uh, which looks about as good as you could hope for a Bayonetta game to look like on the Switch. I'm still sad that Bayonetta is is chained to the Switch, um, but uh, it is. We have to live with it. Um, but uh, but she looks great. Game looks great. All the Bayonetta games have been pretty much certified bangers, so I'm sure this one's probably not going to be any different. I just wish that it was not first on Nintendo. Put that first on PlayStation, Xbox, PC, and then turn all the knobs down and put it on the fucking Switch so that we can still get Bayonetta in all of her glory and not 30 FPS with five polygons because all of the rest of it went into Bayonetta's model. Like, I don't, I don't want that. Uh, Triangle Strategy, which is, I mean, that's gotta be up there with greatest video game names of all time. Triangle Strategy is, uh, coming March 4th, 2022. Uh, and then after that, the really big news that everyone talked about and it blew up on Twitter for days following, and I'm sure you saw more than a few posts about, uh, the Mario movie. Animated Mario movie. The first Mario movie to come in a long, 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 long time. Popping off with the cast list. And we're here to talk about that cast list. So first of all, holy shit, they're actually making a Mario movie. Yeah, but it's animated. But that's, that's a good, I, I, do you, do you want live action Mario? Like, is that what you want in life? Cause I don't know if you remember the original live action Mario shit, but that ain't it. Um, animated movies right now look really fucking good. And so I think that's definitely the way to go. I wouldn't, I don't, I don't need live action Mario. <laughs> um, personally anyway. So the cast list was quite something. Nobody really cared about, I mean, everyone was excited about the cast list except for Mario specifically. Uh, so let's go over the cast list. So, uh, Chris Pratt, of course, is, is the, 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 the man of the hour. He is playing Mario. Uh, Anya Taylor-Joy as Peach. She's the, uh, the lady from, uh, Queen's Gambit. You'd probably notice her from that, at least. Charlie Day as Luigi. Jack Black as Bowser. Keegan-Michael Key as Toad, which is, like, a fucking hilarious one. <laughs> that one made me laugh. That was, like, uh, uh, that sounds perfect. Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong also sounds perfect. Fred Armisen as Cranky Kong. That's great. Kevin Michael Richardson is a uh, comic. Sebastian uh, 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 Manisca uh, Maniscalco? Maniscalco as Spike. And uh, surprise cameos from the man himself who's voiced Mario for 30 years, Charles Martinet. Uh, or Martinet. I don't know if that last, how French that last name is. But all the same. Um, that last one, so the first one, the last one on the list is what everyone talks about, right? It's, it's Charles is in here, why is he not playing Mario, why is Chris Pratt Mario, whatever. Everyone else seems to be, or everything else in this list, everyone seems to be happy with. Jack Black is perfect, Charlie Day is perfect, all these, like, perfect casting, and then people go, what the fuck, Chris Pratt. So, the two, the two reasons that I saw, anyway... Uh, one was, you know, Chris Pratt being associated with, I think it was like, I don't, I can't, I don't know the specifics of it, but his association with, I think some sort of church that people weren't happy with, I think, uh, was why people were like low key semi canceling Chris as of late. Um, and then the second reason was of course that Charles is in the movie, but he's not voicing Mario. He's done it for 30 years. Maybe why he does voice Chris Mario. Maybe, maybe, maybe there is... Um, an alternate Mario. Maybe there's a, a, a maybe. Maybe the Mario is playing Mario. Um, and you have him. You're not the first. You're not the first person that I've heard say that either. That's kind of funny. But yeah, that's that yeah. Could, that like could be a thing. I mean, it's very possible that they may. You know, obviously they're gonna give him a nod, right? Like there might be. You know, there might be a like a, a scene where everybody's dressed up like Mario and he's trying to blend in and one of them is the real actor. Enter the Mario verse. You never know, right? Like there <laughs> we we have no idea. Where Nick Cage plays the 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 noir yeah. Mario. I mean, uh so I guess I guess probably the the main point of discussion is how do I feel about uh the the actor that played Mario uh for Decades, 30 years uh yeah. not being able to get his due yeah when there's an actual big mario movie being made 
And uh, well, my answer is simple. Uh, it's all about getting a movie approved. Yep. Um, this movie is never getting approved without an a big A list actor yep. playing the main character. It just yep. isn't. Studio is just going to say, "Listen, we we love the fact that your iconic role, and without you, none of this would really be possible to a degree." And we'll give you a nod uh, in some way, shape, or form. Which, by the way, he's in the fucking movie. He's his name is actually on the poster, right? You rarely see people that have played characters like this from like kind of no name. Like I know he's not a no name, but he's not an he's not a household name. Like Mario's a household name, but yeah. the act the voice actor isn't. If I saw the voice actor at the mall, I would have no idea that's the guy that played Mario. None at all. Um, so we're talking press junkets. Uh, we're talking social media presence. We're talking notoriety, star power, and to get the studios to green light it. Even if you have all of these big actors supporting Mario, it still needs to be an A-list actor or it's just not going to get approved. It's just really that simple. I know it's kind of a tough pill to swallow, but I think it's a nice thing that they have him making uh, surprise cameos. And they said cameos with an S. So, yeah, because he plays more than Mario in Mario games. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. he's going to be able to reprise a smaller role that isn't, you know, two hours of that. And to be frank, my other reason why I'm happy he's not this is playing probably it also mine, yeah. Is, is I love me some Mario. But can the guy act, like, act, act? Doing an animated film is much different than saying, here we go, you know, having, be, basically being a, a, a sound bite, a voice actor. Mario doesn't have long spurts of dialogue that is, you know, uh, storytelling. You know, it, he, he is the voice of him, but he doesn't say he isn't speaking for two hours, right? You play a video game for two hours, but you're not watching an animated film. And his accent, it would, the way he talks, it would be monotonous and, and painful to go through two hours or an hour and 45 of listening to him act. Not saying he's bad at his job. He's the best, but he is not the best when it comes to creating um, a blockbuster animated films uh when when chris pratt is known to be an amazing voice actor that brings characters to life um and he's got a recognizable voice but it isn't you're not gonna just see chris pratt when you see mario if you want you when you watch the lego movie you did not see emmett as chris pratt you don't you don't he's he's just a really great voice actor and he's yeah. very good at um Having like if it was Ryan Reynolds, you just hear Ryan Reynolds, right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not Ryan Reynolds, and I'm yeah. sure he could probably do a Mario if he really wanted to. Probably, uh, you know, he could definitely probably play a Wario. You know, he could do something that. But you're gonna know it's Ryan Reynolds at least with Chris Pratt. It's like yeah, you'll hear Chris Pratt in the very beginning, and then you just totally forget it's Chris Pratt. It'll be Mario, and the problem I think with the with the voice actor is it'll just be too much Mario. No, it's, it's, uh, no, like that's why I said, I said just two things. It's, it's, it's get or three, I guess three, two of them are related. One is getting a Mario movie green lit in 2021 is no small feat. No. And even if you had everyone else in this list and you cast Charles as Mario, it's still going to probably never happen. It's not going to happen. So, uh, so you need to have somebody recognizable and huge in that number one spot. Two is, uh, is, and and this is related to that is getting asses in seats, not just for the green lighting, but yeah. for the studio making the movie. They want to know that they're going to make their money back. It's great that they got green lit, but now we need to know that we're going to make money. Yeah. Chris Pratt's name is going to help you make money. Yeah. Three. Uh, here's my assumption. I highly doubt that they didn't internally field the idea of Charles playing fucking Mario in this movie. I highly doubt that it was never something that crossed their minds. They probably even had him do some line readings before they went, you know what? 
we can't, not only is it going to be a challenge for us to sell this movie, but this is not going to work for a 90 minute film. We need somebody that's just giving us a more of a straight delivery and leave it at that. We need an actor. And, and then you, you <laughs> can still be act. here yeah. and do your other roles that we can get you in for and still put your name up there and everything, but we can't get you in as Mario. And there's no, nobody, like there were people when somebody, when people started bringing this up where it's like, there's no way people want to hear Charles for fucking 90 minutes doing his Mario shit. People were like, oh, yeah, it wouldn't be that bad. You know, he wouldn't just give that, uh, he'd tone it, he'd to tone it down a little bit. No, you're, you're fooling yourself. It'd be awful. I'm it sorry. would be awful. It, it would, would be, be awful. absolutely, it would be absolutely awful. So, um, it's a kid's I'm happy. movie as well. Like I'm happy he's in it. You know, this is amazing. Yeah, he's fact, in it. Yeah, the fact that they're giving him work and they're recognizing him, like you, you guys should be celebrating the studio for doing that because they're they're Hollywood is a dog eat dog world. They don't care about your feelings. Uh, they're gonna do what makes money. Trust me. If the guy was a triple, uh, 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 an A list actor, and he had a huge following, and he had box office. Uh, numbers behind him uh, they would hire the guy because he's going to cost millions of dollars less than Chris Pratt right Chris yeah. Pratt's going to walk away probably with an 8 10 million dollar paycheck for going into a booth and voice acting Mario they could have paid this guy half a million bucks and said this is your chance to be a star have fun but it's not about that it's about selling it and making it uh, successful and getting it greenlit so I'm with you on that. I, I, the fact that they hired him, he's probably still going to make a little bit of money. He's going to have an opportunity to be in a big role that he would have never have gotten otherwise. And it's his time to shine. This could be his opportunity to go in there, voice three or four characters like people in the Simpsons do and wow the hell out of the studios. And then maybe next time he's in a, uh, a Wreck-It Ralph movie or a, uh, another type of animated film. And then he starts getting traction and making a name for himself outside of just Mario. And then maybe, just maybe, uh, down the road, he has an opportunity to, to be the star in a big film. But he isn't proven. He's only proven on video games. And a video game medium is completely different than the movie one. Uh, so... You know what? You know what made me smile though was the thought that Nintendo called up each of these people and offered them like their roles in, in this film. And you have to you have to look at this list and know that every one of these people played video games and definitely played Mario and loved the idea of being a character in a Mario film. I can see every one of these people being people that casually played games either when they were younger or still do. I could see fucking Kegel Michael Key playing fucking games on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, uh, you know, on his downtime. Jack Black, obviously, playing some fucking video games. Charlie Day, no question. Chris Pratt, without, without even fucking hesitation, is playing video games. Uh, like, pretty much everyone here, you can, you can envision that being Seth a thing. Rogen is donkey Seth Rogen Seth Rogen. <laughs> people did you see did you people did you see people like matching up like you remember the old animated donkey yeah. and they put his laugh over top of it yeah he sounds like fucking donkey kong yeah, come on per it's perfect it's like literal perfect cast it's it, so like, good i i'm not sure they could have nailed really anybody better uh for these picks like no. charlie day is luigi like you That's just fucking you just, oh my god uh like you know <laughs> And Anna Taylor Joy, like I'm like, you know, I I I think she's a great actress. She kind of does have a peach vibe to her. I think maybe you could have gotten uh, somebody else, but she does have this bit of innocence and stuff to her. She looks uh, like fucking she looks peach, like though. Peach, yeah, yeah. But we're not talking about looks. We're, we're going for voice acting. No, I, but like when I looked at her, and I was like, and and I've heard her speak. But like when I looked at her, when I was talking, when I did Sammy's podcast here, we talked about this obviously as well because it was such big news. And I said, out of all the people in this list. She struck me like the one where they were doing headshots and they were like, she looks like Peach, put her in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> like, that well, was... she's she's also she's also hot enough of an actress right now, and she's probably cheap as well. Like they can get yeah. her at a good price. Yeah. Um, because I think there's all kinds of of actresses. Well, you could have got lots of people do it, yeah. Yeah. But, but uh, uh she did great. I, I still need to watch. I have one episode, I think, left. I can't believe I haven't finished it yet. One or two episodes left of Queen's Gambit. That was a fire show. It's good. She did a fantastic. She did a fantastic job in that. It'll be interesting to see what her voice acting chops are like because 
I don't know if she's done voice acting before, but you know, most people that can act can be coached to do voice acting within uh, within reason. These guys are all seasoned actors. Yeah. They would be able to act on a green screen, on a microphone. Yeah. All of these these are actors, so they're going to be totally fine. Dude, Jack Black is Bowser though. Yeah. It's going to be good. Fuck fuck. That's it's going to be, be good. good. Yeah. So that's uh, so that was like really that that news took over like any, they could have announced literally anything else in that entire presentation, and it wouldn't matter because that thing stole the entire show. And it was so funny because Miyamoto, who wasn't even like on screen the entire fucking time, he literally pulled this one, walked out on the screen off camera. Chris Pratt is Mario. Walk the fuck off camera. That was it. He showed up, and he was like, hey, Mario movie, Chris Pratt, left, dropped the mic. He knew what he was doing. That was all he was there for. He was looking fantastic, though. His hair was very nicely coiffed, looking good, dropped the, the Chris Pratt line, blew up the internet, and walked the fuck away. Uh, but there you go. So that's, uh, you know what? I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, yep. I'm looking forward to the movie. I think it's going to be great. Yep. Uh, with a cast like that, I mean, holy shit, how can you go wrong? Yep. Uh, so, uh, so there you have it. Oh, 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 oh,